Kilda internet. It's a miserable grey winter's day here. So I spent the morning cleaning up my sewing room because it was getting a bit messy and this seemed like a good opportunity while it's tidy to show you around because I don't think I've ever shown you the whole space. I've sort of shown you bits and pieces of it as I've been working on various things. So this is going to be a little sewing room tour. And I mean little. My sewing room is tiny. <laughs> but I managed to pack a lot of stuff into it. So obviously this is the sewing machine part of the room. I've got just enough room to get in between the ironing board and the table to get into the sewing machine. But once I'm in there it's quite a cosy little spot. I've got a lot of notice boards in this room because it's really handy to be able to stick things on the walls that I've been working on or notes to myself or just things that look cool. On the wall by my sewing machine I've got, I use a lot of command hooks to keep things under control. I've got various scissors and, and a laser aligning tool which is quite handy sometimes for trying to get a good quarter inch seam. And behind me is my fabric stash. Most of my fabric stash. Up the top I've got a couple of bolts of fabric that I got when they're on sale and some random fabrics like old sheets and flannels and denim Stuff that's not actual quilting material but is quite useful for the backings of projects like wall hangings and things. And I've also got a box of fat quarters I've never opened. I kind of like how it looks there and one day I've got to open it and actually use them. Then I've got some bigger pieces, a few pre-cuts and fat quarter bundles. And as you can see, it's a bit of an overflow from the shelves above and below it. Then this shelf is the bulk of my regular stash, which is fat quarters, things that are between about a 10 inch square and a fat quarter I still keep in my stash. I, things have to get pretty small before I consider them a scrap. And there's a few half metre and metre pieces in there as well but the bulk of it is fat quarters or similar sizes to that. It's organized roughly into colors at least into color families. I think you can see into the back there it's too deep so there's purples and greens and blacks and whites are all in the back row which is not ideal. I wish I had a bit more space than this for fabric but this works. Down on the next shelf I've got pins and cottons and feet and all those kind of small notions and a few books. I don't have many books because I don't tend to follow patterns so mostly they're just there for inspiration. And coming down further we've got the fabric I've acquired recently and haven't decided where to put it yet or I've just got no space to put it. So this is kind of another overflow space and a small stack of Christmas fabrics. It's also where I keep my big bulldog clips that I use for um, basting quilts on the kitchen table. And then down on the bottom is just junk. Um, stuff I don't really want to throw out but I haven't got anywhere to put it at the moment and it's just there. The cat quite often goes and investigates in that shelf so it's usually a bit of a mess. And then down the side of the bookshelf is the rulers that I use most often to have them nice and handy. This whole section of wall is covered in an old flannelette sheet and makes a really great design wall. It's, everything will just stick to the sheet. And I can in theory pull the ironing board away from there so that I've got the full height of the wall but in reality that doesn't give me a lot of space to move around so I don't do that very often but sometimes if I have to lay out something really big but it's really handy having such a, a nice big design wall. The only thing I wish I'd done is put some foam or something in behind it so I could put pins into it. And then there's my epic ironing board, 
which I showed you how I made that in a video. Underneath it I've got things like steamer seam and interfacing and anything else that comes in a roll goes in there. It's also where I keep my uh, light box and my pressing mats and some rulers that don't hang on the wall, things like that, and, and an old cutting mat that I sometimes use as a second mat if I'm, I want one to work right by the sewing machine. This is the side closest to the sewing machine, so it's actually like in arm's reach when I'm sewing. So I've got things like a little repair kit for my sewing machine and some free motion tools there. And then the boxes I use for keeping things like uh, batting scraps and things like rick rack and elastic and random useful stuff like that. This has got some fabric crumbs that I was sorting so they're just in there temporarily. And on the other side mostly I've got stuff relating to camera equipment, microphones, that sort of stuff. Then in this corner on top of the filing cabinet which is just my office filing cabinet because this space doubles as my office and I worked from home in this space right through the uh, lockdowns for the pandemic. So I've got a whole lot of shoe boxes and other similar boxes which are various projects in progress. And next to it obviously there's some quilts which are basted ready for quilting or partially quilted. And there's a few blocks in there that I haven't made up a project box for so they're just kind of in there. In the corner of the room opposite my sewing machine I've got a big L-shaped desk that doubles as my cutting table and as my work desk where I edit videos, sometimes I do work work at it. I'm using the back of the door as a storage space for a few more rulers and behind the door is what used to be a wardrobe and it is filled with all the stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else. Bulk amounts of batting and pillow fill, old sewing machine and an overlock which I've never used. Someone gave it to me and it didn't have a cord with it. So I need to go online and find a power cord. Then the top few bins here are filled with crumbs and really small scraps that aren't big enough to put into my actual stash but I still use and some non-quilting fabrics like upholstery fabrics things like that that are sometimes fun to use for accent stuff and most important this is where Parsnip sits and watches me work. She's not here today but on a cold day it gets quite warm in this little wardrobe so she really likes that spot so I've put a old blanket down there for her to sit on. So that's my sewing space. It's tiny but it's the biggest space I've got available at the moment and I make it work. It's just me in here so it doesn't matter if I have to squeeze between the desk and the sewing table and between the sewing table and the ironing board. And one advantage of having such a small room is that everything's within arm's reach pretty much. It all works out. Well, I hope you enjoyed that wee tour. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment. And I will see you next time. Kakite ano, internet. Bye.